After proving our superiority to Game Freak in the Pokemon Game Design Department by fixing Pokemon Yellow version, we decided to go even further in doing the company's job for them by fixing Gen 2. So without further ado, time to make Pokemon Crystal a better game. Pokemon Crystal starts off by having the player complete a fetch quest, much in the style of Kanto, then giving them the possibility to go on their merry way. After a few routes and some trainers, the players will find themselves in Violet City, home to not only Gym Leader Faulkner, but also Sprout Tower, where the player can train their Pokemon against notoriously EXP nutritious Bell Sprouts. Now, that is cool and all, but then the player will discover that the Gym Leader's team consists of a level 7 Pidgey and a level 9 Pidgeotto, which is ludicrously low and encourages the player to just overlevel the Gym rather than actually play around it properly. Fortunately, fixing that is pretty simple. We just have to raise the levels on the gym leader's team. We shall go with 9 and 13 to match the heart gold and soul silver levels for the gym. This trend of things being low levels is observable throughout all of Johto, probably to try making room for more level increases in Kanto, but in all honesty, there's no need to force levels to be low like this as this hinders the gym fight's ability to be well designed. In fact, most trainers need to recruit a slight buff in levels to match what the player will be at. This will be done all the way to the grunt fights in Slowpoke Well, after which the player will have to fight Gym Leader Bugsy. Now, Fury Cutter Scyther is very respectable for this point in the game, especially with the dangerous quick attacks. However, Metapod and Kakuna are incredibly useless and can be beaten by virtually anything. Now, before we talk about how to replace those guys, notice something about all Gym Leader's Pokemon so far. Pidgey, Pidgeotto, Metapod, Cocoon, and Scyther. Notice how there are no Johto Pokemon. In fact, out of all 23 Pokemon the Johto leaders use, only a measly four of them are actually Johto Pokemon. We don't know what Game Freak was smoking on this one, but we'd be down for some of it. Now, for the Bugsy team, we'll remove both Cocoons and give this man an Ariados at level 17 with Psybeam, Fury Swipes, and Poison Sting. The Scyther's level will be increased to 19, but kept as is otherwise. This will not only improve the level curve, but the player, given the overall increase in levels, will likely have more options in terms of evolutions by that point, with Pokemon like Pidgey and Totodao evolving at 18, to name a few. Going further, we'll also increase levels of every trainer by a few, which we will do from this point on, and the same will be applied to Miltank, with levels of her team being of around 21 and 24. Whitney's team is already extremely hard for casuals and should not be made even rougher. Moving forward, the player has to do the extremely awkward pseudo wudo quest thanks to how oddly placed the bottle is, which was kind of fixed in Crystal, though honestly the girl next to pseudo wudo should outright teleport you to the flower shop after you defeat Whitney. That would be much more convenient. After that, the player goes to Ecruteague City, home to a mandatory rival fight, and of course, Gym 4. Now, it's beyond us why Gen 2 would add only one ghost type to the whole one ghost evolution line that existed in Gen 1 and then proceed to not put that guy in the ghost gym. It's not like Mistrevis is too powerful for this point in the game or anything. In fact, we would give Morty a team of two Mistrevis with their level up moveset of Confuse Ray, Mean Look, Spite, and Psybeam, together with the Ace Gengar with levels in the 25 to 27 range. Now, once that is done and the Kimono Girls are defeated, the player gets HMO3 Surf, which opens up both sides of the map. In fact, all three of the next gyms can be done in any order now, and it seems the fights were designed with that in mind. Look at how the levels are close to each other. Now that, as we explained in the Kanto video, is non-linearity, and we don't like it. Of course, there are many ways we could go about trying to fix that issue, but we decided to take a hint from the master himself, legendary ROM hacker Dryano. In his hack, Saker Gold and Storm Silver, Dryano made sure his games had a clear, linear structure. He first made sure the entire east side was locked until both Chuck and Jasmine were cleared. Then he made sure the secret potion would only be given to the player once they managed to defeat Chuck, thus forcing an order of Chuck, then Jasmine, then Price. Now, this is definitely not the only way to do it, but it is definitely a very slick one, so we'll go for it. Well done, Dre. Now, on to Chuck himself. Once again, Chuck has a team with only two Pokemon, with both of them being from Kanto. Here is a new and improved team. With Jasmine, we will make her team a bit better and add more Gen 2 sauce.
Once the player defeats both gyms, they will be allowed to go to Mahogany Town. There, we will go to Lake of Rage and play the game as normal. However, levels of random trainers will be allowed to go significantly higher than normal crystal versions as this split can no longer be done before beating the steel and fighting gyms, which will ensure the player has what it takes to beat anything thrown at them. The rocket split will also not be changed, apart from some level ups and evolutions given to the bad guys as it's an interesting split to play in our opinion. What will be changed a lot though is Price's team. Having a freaking seal is not acceptable for the seventh gym leader. Therefore, we go with. This team only has three Pokemon, but has massively improved movesets and notably offers Piloswine Earthquake, which makes it significantly better. Now, before the player can go on to fight Gym 8, they are made to slog through what may be the most boring split in any Pokemon game, Johto Radio Tower. Now, we get it, that Team Rocket is messing with Radio Tower and sending sound waves or whatever, but most of those grunts and even some of the executives are so boring. Like, look at this absolute creative gem. Now, this split makes itself even more of a pain by forcing the player to go underground, do a bunch more boring stuff, go back up to the tower again, and fight more grunts before defeating final two execs. Honestly, none of this has to be the case. You could just have this be a one-time go into the tower without the in-between underground thing. Fight some grunts, battle the more interesting execs at the end with the Vile Plume and the Hound Doom in their teams, and have that be a day. It would definitely be less janky and a lot better. Now, of course, the underground part of Radio Tower Split includes a rival fight, which we could keep in the game by either putting right before Radio Tower or right before fighting the final executives in similar fashion to Gen 1 Silph Co. Rival. After the way less boring version of Radio Tower Split is done, the player can go back to its main quest and head towards Gym 8, where Claire waits for him. Now, Claire is a very interesting gym fight and has great moves on her Pokemon. Obviously, she only has one Johto Pokemon, but there is a limit to what you can do given how few dragons there are at this point, and the fight is very good too. Now, what is not interesting and good and awesome is Gen 2's Victory Road. Apparently, Gen 2 devs looked at Gen 1 Victory Road and was like, all the trainers are optionals there, so why not just not have them this time? The V Road is very empty and bland, and honestly, a few Ace Trainers would not hurt it at all, with the rival 4 fight being the main event before the Elite Four. Speaking of the Gen 2 Elite Four, it's kind of a mixed bag, all things considered. Will's team is actually fire, though it could use Mega Drain on Executor and Surf on Slowbro, but the Pokemon are decent, the moves are good, it's a great start. However, Koga has Area Dose. Like, who designed this stuff? We would put Fortress in the lead slot with its spike support and swap Aridos away for something like Weezing, which has the threatening explosion with moves like Toxic and Sludge Bomb. Now, the lack of Gen 1 Pokemon is less of an issue here because Koga is a guy from Kanto, so it would make sense he mostly has Kanto Pokemon. Speaking of Kanto guys, next up is Bruno, and it makes you think they really had to bring back the two most idiotic trainers in the region and put them in the Elite Four. Like, why not someone like Misty or Blaine or Lorelei? Nope, Bruno it is. Bruno's kind of hard to fix because the whole triple Hitmons thing makes sense, though they are pretty garbage. And honestly, at that point, we're just giving it Golem instead of Onyx and calling it a day. Now, next up is Karen. All the chick needs is Lick and Spite on Gengar to be swapped out for Psychic and Shadow Ball, and she'll be up and ready to own some challengers. Great team! And last, but not least, is Lance, who… just look at this team. It's great! It has coverage, it has strong mons, it has all what you'd want. Nothing to see here, moving on. Now, obviously, since this is Gen 2, we have to handle a whole other region of Kanto because the devs were like, yep, that's a good idea. Now, Kanto's obviously a post-game area, which means it should all be about having fun and doing cool stuff. Here's how we can make it better in that regard. Number one, remove restrictions and the stupid Team Rocket story thing in Cerulean. Number two, making the wild Pokemon high levels. It's really stupid to find something at level 18 in Kanto after you defeated the Elite Four. There's no reason for the player to catch any of that stuff, which is really unfun. Number three, making the gym leaders very strong. 
Now the player has already become strong and has good Pokemon, so there's no reason not to give him a challenge, especially against trainers he's expected to face again from Gen 1 and see how strong they became. A team like Janine's or Brock's is a freaking travesty. Here's some ideas for gyms. Then we will keep the final gym as blue, requiring the player to beat all other gyms before accessing it, and keeping the same team he uses as it's very thematic and very strong. Now, regarding red, the notoriously overleveled fight that ends it all, we thought about how we would fix this fight, but then we thought, naturally, this overleveled piece of trash might be the most iconic stuff of all time for a first casual playthrough. Now, having Nuzlocke this game multiple times, we know red is not hard if you level up for it, but from a casual perspective, the challenge of going underleveled against Pikachu and friends and ending up finding some mean way to win is a very satisfying experience. That or we are under massive nostalgia failure, but either way, we elect to leave red as it is in our hypothetical improved crystal. And just like that, we have fixed the Pokemon Johto games. Please comment on anything you think could have been done better, and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Have a nice one.